Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Today I wanted to show you how you can layer your heat embossing. I've done a technique video kind of like this in the past, but I wanted to show you another example and show you how effective this technique is when you layer your metallic embossing powders. So I have a couple examples for you today. I'm also going to give you some tips on creating the glitter die cuts with lots, lots of dimension like you see here. So let's go ahead and dive in. This technique, by the way, works especially well if you have stamp layering stamp sets. The stamp set I'm using here is a great stamp layering example. This is from Altenew, and it was designed exclusively for Simon's stamp of, as part of Stamp Timber. So it's a limited time type of stamp. It's a great set, and you can see the beautiful leaves that you can create. Now I just have white cardstock here. I'm stamping the solid layer, the bottom layer first with Versamark ink. So you can see I'm doing the most solid leaf there with Versamark ink. I'm gonna go ahead and heat emboss this one. I am using Hero Arts Silver Embossing Powder. You can use any embossing powders you want. I wanted to show you with this example how beautiful it is to layer together metallic powders such as silver, gold, and copper. So I'm starting with a silver here. My favorite embossing powders are those from Hero Arts, Ranger, and Wow, and you'll see me use a mix of them. Now you wanna get your heat gun good and hot. I really like this heat gun from Hero Arts. It used to be a Milwaukee brand, now it's the Wagner brand. If you find either heat gun, they are excellent heat guns. They are wonderful for getting good heat embossing with little warping. Okay, so now I'm going to stamp a second one. The reason I didn't stamp my two leaves at the same time, the two bottom layer, is because I wanted to kind of arrange them kind of uh, mirror opposite of each other. So I couldn't see it without doing the, first, the heat embossing on the first one first. Okay, so every time I do heat embossing, before I do any Versamark stamping, I always use my anti-static powder tool. You'll see me do that in between every step. So there we have our two bottom layers. I'm gonna let that cool a little bit. Then I'm going to move to the next layer stamp. I'm gonna use my anti-static powder tool again. Now for this one, I'm going to stamp right on top of the first embossing powder. You can do this with no problem. You just kinda of wanna look from the sides, that's why my head's in the way there, to try to line it up. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see mine isn't perfect, but it works just fine. Now this time, I'm going to put on Hero Arts Gold Embossing Powder. So I'm putting Gold Embossing Powder right on top of the silver. And check it out, as it melts with the heat gun, you get this beautiful color on top of the silver. You get the gold on top of the silver and it blends together nicely because it kind of melts into each other. The more heat you put on, the more it melts into each other. So I just do enough to cause that powder to melt and check that out, it's just beautiful in real life. Now we have one more layer to do on this. We have the outline image. I'm going to do this one with a glitter embossing powder just to have something a little bit different. You could do copper here, you could do black, you could do whatever you want. I'm going to stamp this first with Versamark ink and then I'm going to use a copper glitter embossing powder from WOW. I thought just a little bit of glitter in this would be beautiful. Again, I'm stamping right on top of the images already. The Versamark will go on there nicely. Here is that embossing powder. I'm doing this over a coffee filter because it's easy to contain your embossing powder and then put it back into the bottle. As I heat set this, you'll see the glittery copper outline kind of melt into the silver and gold that we already have. It's so beautiful in real life. Now you can do this with any colors of embossing powder, maybe some different shades of greens, but not everybody has a bunch of colors, but a lot of people have metallic. So just go ahead and try layering your metallic embossing powders. You can get a beautiful look. It's especially great for fall. Okay, next let's go ahead and create this dimensional sentiment die cut that you see here. For this, I'm going to use Tim Holtz Substrate Sheets. These are fantastic for die cutting. This is paper, but it's more durable and a little bit thicker. And I find that it works really well when I need to die cut sentiments. The reason why is when you go to pop them out of the paper, they never tear. This doesn't tear. So I'm going to die cut three of these. Now in the pack, there is like a white, a dark brown, which I'm using here, and a craft color substrate sheets. I'm using the dark brown because I want this to be a dark brown die cut, but you can change the color of this by using embossing powders. But when you die cut this, it's a little more sturdy, easier to work with than just a thin piece of cardstock. You could by all means use just cardstock here and layer three together. It won't be as thick, so you could do additional layers if you want to. 
Now I wanted to show you, if you run some adhesive over this, you can see how durable it is. It's not tearing, it's not fragile, so you don't have to worry as much when you're working with it. So all I'm doing is adhering three of these together. There are many ways you can adhere multiple die cuts together. I just wanted to be able to show you how easy this is to work with and that it doesn't tear. And again, what I used here is the Tim Holtz substrate sheets. There are many great techniques you can do with these sheets, and I will share some of those in the future. Be sure to check out Creative Chemistry 101 over at Online Card Classes. Uh, Tim shows some great things you can do with this product, but I wanted to show you it's great for simple die cutting. Okay, so now I have three substrate sheet thankful die cuts layered together. I'm going to take my Versamark ink pad and press right onto it firmly so that the ink pad kind of wraps around the sides of the die cuts also. And I'm going to use my tweezers to dip this into some Judikins Iridescent Sparkle Embossing Powder. You'll notice that I'm running low on this stuff. This is one of my favorite embossing powders. I've had it for many, many, many years. So I need to get some more. But basically, I'm just dipping that in there. And I'm trying to get some of the powder on the sides of the die cut, too. I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. And what I'll end up with is a dark brown with some sparkle to it. You'll see that it die cuts beautifully and heat embosses beautifully. You could leave the die cuts like this, but I decided to put another layer on, but this time of something else. Again, after it's cooled, I'm gonna go ahead and press some Versamark ink firmly on top of it. This time I'm going to hold it with my tweezers and dip it into Wow Clear Ultra High Embossing Powder. This is a very big granule powder. So you'll see it looks like there's sugar all over my die cut here. The reason these powders are big is so that when it dries, you get a really, or when you heat set it, you get a really thick layer. So what I have is dark brown with some sparkle embossing powder with a thick layer of clear over it. So it's super smooth and super shiny. It looks like an embellishment, not just a little die cut. And because this die cut is so sturdy, I don't have to worry about it when I stretch it across the frame like you see here. Now to create that frame, I use this Avery L die. It cuts the postage frame and it pierces tiny little dots for finishing touch. You can see the die set that it came from. I die cut it from white cardstock so that I could have a white on white card. Now I'm cutting my craft foam tape super thin here so that I can put strips of it on the back of the frame. And I'm just going to take this frame and glue it right on top of the stamped piece that we created. Now I want to go ahead and trim off the white around it. I didn't center up the leaves very well. I didn't really know what I was going to do with the card. So I'm just going to take my scissors and kind of push it underneath the frame so that I only cut what's hanging out from it. So I can go ahead and glue this onto a white card and nobody will ever know that I cut the panel down. So on the back of this, I'm going to put lots of some of my stamp runner adhesive and I'll glue this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. So all my whites match and it looks like I stamped in the center of a note card and put a floating frame around it. Okay, now for the little die cut sentiment, I'm going to cut two tiny little pieces of foam tape to put in the center of the die cut, but really what's holding it in place is the strong multi-medium adhesive from Ranger, and I'm putting little dots of that behind the T and behind the L, so it glues to the frame, and I'll put something heavy on that while it dries. So now it's kind of suspended across there, and that strong adhesive will hold it in place. Now I'm using the same strong adhesive to add some sequins. These are Lucy's Cards sequins. These are wonderful sequins. I have a variety of them here. And I'm putting them kind of uh, in the same pattern on the top and on the bottom. So this card kind of has like a mirror image to it. I'm trying to keep it very simple and clean. Now for the sequins in the center, I actually put a tiny little bead that's included in those sequin sets also, just for fun finishing touch. So there you have the first card. Now I wanted to show you a variation of this using a different stamp set, a completely different look. This time I'm using a stamp set from Avery L. And this is also an exclusive stamp set for Simon Says Stamp as part of Stamp Temper. So it's a limited time uh, kind of product. I have gone ahead and stamped and heat embossed some snowflakes with some blue embossing powder from WOW. Now I'm stamping right on top of it with Versamark with a different, smaller snowflake, right on top of the bigger one. 
This time I'm going to add some WOW silver glitter embossing powder. So I am again layering my stamped images. Now these snowflakes really aren't meant to be layered on top of each other, but I wanted to show you that you could do this with any snowflake or flower images you may have. And check it out, now I have a snowflake that's silver towards the center and blue around the outside. Now I wanted some light blue embossing powder details. So I'm using a quickie glue pen to add little dots and also color in the tips of this snowflake. So I'm just coloring it in with some uh, adhesive here and I'm adding some light blue embossing powder. Now, believe it or not, that adhesive will hold that powder and you can heat set it. You just need to heat set it a little bit longer than normal and you get some fun dimension. And now I have a blue uh, snowflake with some silver glitter on top and some touches of light blue. So this is a fun way to kind of layer things up and make some simple images look super special. I'm going to do the same thing here. I did the light blue embossed snowflakes. Now I'm adding tiny little dots of the quickie glue pen. This time I'm putting on the silver glitter embossing powder so that there'll be touches of silver glitter in our tiny little snowflakes. So you can see all the texture that you get there. Now for this one, I use the Tim Holtz substrate sheets in the white color and I die cut a Simon Says Stamp delightful die from that. And I layered three together. I put Versamark on it, dipped it into my silver glitter embossing powder to give it some shine and check that out, it's beautiful. But again, I really want some smooth dimension to that. So once it's cooled, I'm gonna go ahead and press some more Versamark on it and dip it back into that wow ultra high embossing powder. Remember, this is the big granule stuff. It looks kind of like sugar. And watch, as you heat set it, you end up with a really beautiful shine with the glitter kind of trapped below it, so it's nice and smooth. Now, I completed the card just like I did the other one. I put the white floating frame, adhered the die cut across it, and I added a few silver sequin stars. So again, it's the same design, but I'm doing different types of stamp layering with heat embossing. It's a great way to stretch products you probably already have. If you are interested in the products I actually used in this video, I link them below in my YouTube description. You can also head over to my blog for much more information. If you like these ideas for heat embossing, be sure to check out the other three videos in the center here. The first one shows another example of heat emboss layering, and that's some bright, colorful layering. In the middle is how I organize my embossing powders, and on the right is another example of creating a dimensional heat embossed die cut. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll come back soon, and I hope you have a wonderful day.